welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to, to uh, Outreach Connection. My name is Timothy Southers. I serve as your host of Outreach Connection. Really excited today to get a chance to talk to Lynette Shank, uh, who is the center director at the Tri-State Area Christian Women's Ministry. Really excited to talk to her about some of the great things that they have going over there. Uh, before we get started, though, I want to go over our theme verse for today, uh, which comes out of uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Lynette, thank you so much for being with us today. Really thank appreciate you. it having you um, to talk about the things going on with Tri-State Area Christian Women's Ministry. Just first of all, give us a little bit of background of what uh, a Tri-State uh, Christian Women's Ministry is all about. Okay. Um, the ministry was founded 30 years ago by Riova Meredith in Bloomington, Indiana. And uh, she was an educator and um, she was having, you know, like we all have marital, you know, conflicts now mm -hmm. and then. And God laid on her heart, you know, you loving me and having an active relationship with me still struggle with marital conflicts. Think of all the women out there that have the same, you know, issues, the same problems, and they don't have me. Um, so she just really felt directed by God to begin a women's ministry. And so she actually uh, quit her job and just went into um, developing the Center for Women's Ministry. And she had no idea that it would go as far as it has. Wow. Um, we have about 33 centers right now. Um, we have six that are international. And we are the first center to open in the state of Illinois. And wow. we actually opened our doors in September. And, um, you know, then we were just kind of getting traction. and. <laughs> Then the COVID thing happened. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, our mission is to provide counseling at no cost, support groups, Bible studies, prayer groups, and educational opportunities in a non-judgmental atmosphere to women within the community. And for us, it's within the tri-state area. Awesome. Talk a little bit about the vision of, of tri-state women's um, okay. ministry. Our vision is to serve um, in the community, improving emotional and spiritual health of women in our area. Uh, we will acquire the necessary resources to minister to more women through professional level volunteers. Um, some of the practical ways that we um, um, put our vision into practice is we have peer counseling. Okay. We have um, trained peer counselors. They are required to go through a um, study called Making Peace with Your Past. Uh, because we know that if we do not heal from our own wounds, we're not going to be able to help anybody else. Wow, yeah. And so that's a 12-week study. It's actually open to anyone, and we're going to have another one um, in the fall, probably the end of August, 1st of September. We haven't set a date yet. Um, but anyway, they go through that 12-week study. And then we have a 42-hour uh, training that they go to um, that's called basic peer counselor training and so they go through that once they go through that um, they go through an interview process and then if all goes well then they can become a peer counselor um, we emphasize we're not professional counselors <laughs> we're trained peer counselors mm -hmm. um, all of our services are free so um, a client fills out an intake form the intake form uh, comes to me uh, I read through it I pray over it and then um, assign them a peer counselor. Our motto is um, we've been where you are. Mm. And so, you know, we have women coming from that are volunteering that come from um, all sources of pain. Mm. And so um, when somebody uh, send, fills out their form, I kind of read through it and I try to match them up with somebody that's maybe gone through something uh, similar oh, or wow. I think would be a good, you know, good person for them to be with. Um, we also have support groups. Um, we do have a support group um, called Recovering from the Losses of Life. Mm. That is starting July 16th, which is a Thursday, and it will be from 5.30 to 7.30 on Thursday nights. Um, and as far as the study is, it's not just recovering from death, because that's kind of what you think of when you right. think of loss. But um, this study actually covers um, not only the loss through death, but maybe the loss of a friendship that's just a broken friendship, yeah. or the loss of a dream, or the loss of a job. And you know, with what's going on, we've yeah. had a lot of losses. Yes, <laughs> very true. Um, so very it's a really true. timely study. Yeah. 
So we, um, we have that. We have um, Bible studies. Uh, we've done Second Tuesday events, which is just a second Tuesday of every month. Mm -hmm. We Usually it's a craft activity, um, and it's just to provide women with community. Mm -hmm. uh, they can come and have fun. Again, there's no cost. Um, and um, we do educational things. We've um, done a little bit uh, of outreach in the community. And mm -hmm. so we're just kind of getting our, you know, our feet wet right, and yeah. um, recognizing the need and where, where our niche can be in the community to, to best serve women. Wow, so awesome. You guys are doing some wonderful things. Um, really want to talk a little bit about this making peace with your past, which is a 12-week study. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that they go over in that in that kind of study? That, I think that's very interesting. Yeah, they, it's, it's divided into sections. Um, some of it is dealing with um, first admitting you know, admitting that you have pain and admitting yeah. that you have a wound. And that's the way we get <laughs> to healing is admitting right. we, we know we have an issue. Yeah. And then putting voice to that, you know, within our, our small group that we have. Um, they'll go through shame. Uh, they go through different, you know, identity issues. Um, um, just a variety of things that they wow. go through and you uh, focus on each week and share in your group. I can just imagine been, the growth that comes from that, just from that that type of, of study. Um, you know, the, the, there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. So yes. when you have an opportunity to get that healing, you're able to heal other people. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's that's a, a process that, go, that people go through in order to get to that point of, of healing uh, and, and getting over pain that you mm -hmm. have. So a lot of your peer counselors then, they go through the study, um, where where did they where did they come from? Peer counselors? Did they just come by, by by way of volunteering, or how did peer counselors come to you guys? Yeah, it's through volunteering. Okay. Um, so we have um, women that come in, and you know, some of them want to be peer counselors, some of them don't want to be. Some mm -hmm. just want to be, you know, involved in the ministry. Right. Um, so we have um, some ladies that are receptionists. So during our office hours, they just come in, they man the desk. Um, when people come in, you know, they, um, you know, see what the need is right. and. And if we have a peer counselor that's there and it's an immediate need, um, we can go ahead and, you know, have a, a session with them then. Otherwise, they might take an intake form and that kind of thing. Um, some of the ladies want to go into leadership. And in order to lead a support group, a Bible study, um, peer counseling, anything like that, they have to go through the peer, the basic peer counselor training. Okay. Um, okay. So we want them, we want our volunteers trained. We want to be as professional as we possibly can and, um, you know, make that impact in the community and wow. be there for women. Talk a little bit about your scriptural ref, uh, directives. You told me there were, that was, I think those were really interesting. Can you go over those? Yes. Um, and this was given to Riova. And so this is the spiritual directive that is, you know, from the top on down through all the centers. And it's out of Isaiah 61 okay. and it's one and three. And it's the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to grant consolation and joy to those who grieve in Zion, giving them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the garment of praise instead of despair. And so, you know, we really want to provide women with hope. Yes, yes. And, you know, we all get there, even, you know, even through this thing that's going on, you know, it's yeah. hard to um, not spiral down into hopelessness, that's you right, know, and that's true. where the importance of, you know, women encouraging women and being there for each other. And, um, you know, you and I don't have the same story. Mm -hmm. Women come in, we don't have the same story, but I have pain. Yes. And pain knows pain, and that's, that's so, where that's we so can true. start. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very important that people get opportunity to uh, get with other who, other people who are going to similar situations. Number one, because um, the enemy would love us to, to think that we're going through things by ourselves, that we're the only one going through this thing, that nobody would understand what I'm going through. And we get opportunity to be around other people who are going through that. It's really a powerful thing to be like, wow, you, you made it through and I can make it through as well. Right. Um, and so I think that's so, so off, awesome about the peer counseling portion of it and then those support groups. What are some of the things you see coming out of those support groups uh, that are, are, are really so uh, pertinent and important uh, to help people to heal, have the hope and, and, and have restoration? Um, I think, like you said, isolation, you know, mm -hmm. that is, I think, the enemy's favorite thing to do Most definitely. <laughs> is to isolate us. You know, we're embarrassed. We're ashamed of the pain we have. Um, uh, you know, and some of us, you know, don't have 
as tragic a story as others, but we still have pain. And we kind of tell us that that pain doesn't count because, mm. you know, I know somebody else that has such a, you know, a more tragic past than what I, I have. I right. need to suck it up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all have pain and we need to come through. And so the support group provides um, a small group of women that can um, go through this book. You know, again, we have this Making Peace book, which we, you know, use regularly, but we have other ones. But it can help them. You know, some women may come knowing they have something, but they can't mm -hmm. put their finger on right, it. Yeah. It can help them identify it. And that's okay. huge just to be able to identify it. But to be able to voice it, speak it out, that's a huge part of healing is to be able to speak it out and to be able to walk in that freedom. Mm -hmm. And um, as they walk in freedom, you know, that doesn't just change their world. When someone gets healed, it changed their family, anybody right. they, they have an opportunity <laughs> to come in contact with, even mm -hmm. a stranger. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when something happens, um, somebody says something, it it can just hit us in a way they may have said something innocently and we just you know are down their throat mm -hmm. because it you know it scratches it's at a, a wound yes yeah, yeah. yeah it triggers mm -hmm. triggers yeah, a wound definitely. in our life and so when you can come in and get that healed you respond differently to people and they recognize that and that can draw them towards healing mm. That's interesting. What are some of the things you have, guys have coming up in the future? I know we're trying to get them back some some type of normalcy or in this new normalcy they're talking about. Yeah. What are some of the things you guys have planned for some of your future ministries? Well, right now, um, we just opened this month. Um, we're uh, doing peer counseling again. So if anybody's interested, they can get a client intake form. They can call us at 217-440-8200 or they can email us at tristatecwm at gmail.com right. and uh, we'll get a form out and get that started. And we um, have also picked up a couple of support groups that were going and then you know, COVID happened. Right. And so now we're picking those back up and finishing them. Okay. And um, so we'll be um, finished with those at the end of this month. July 7th, we will be opening for our regular office hours. Awesome. Um, and that is Tuesday and Thursday from nine to noon and um, in the evening from 5 to 7.30. And um, so we'll be starting that. Again, we have that study July 16th, Recovering from the Losses of Life, that will be going on. Um, we have our Cup of Grace, which we do um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have a morning cup at 10 a.m. and an evening cup at 6. And what that means, it's kind of an open support group is kind of what I refer to it as. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can come to the center. We sit around the table. We have cookies and, you know, coffee. And we just share a devotion wow. and just kind of have, you know, some community, you know, talk about what was shared or just what's going on in your life. Um, so we'll be starting that up in July. We did move that to kind of a virtual web uh, on the, our Facebook page um, during uh, this time. And so we've been doing that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's been an experience because a lot of us, you know, we haven't done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you have a lot of ums and mm -hmm. uh, and, but we're learning. Yes. <laughs> and we get the word of God out. So that's, that's the most and, yes, important that thing. That is the most important yeah. thing, yeah. So I hear you have a new uh, assistant director, is that correct? Yes. Tell us a little about her. Yes, we have a new assistant director named Carol Ruffin. Okay. And uh, I'm very excited. That's one of the great things about this ministry. You know, um, some of the women that are volunteering, I knew, mm -hmm. um, but Carol was one that I didn't know beforehand. And so she's become a good friend. Friend. And so she will be helping me with the Making Peace classes. Um, she'll be helping with administrative uh, duties. She really took on Second Tuesday, and she kind of pretty much organized a lot of the activities and uh, getting people to come in and do presentations and stuff for us. And um, she's just a good person to you know bounce ideas off. Very sweet spirit, and uh, holds me accountable, which is important and um, just really excited to be able to have her in leadership and to, you know, to share in the growth of the ministry and um, just excited about that. All right. Well, I know I had, well, I had a conversation um, a little bit ago with one of the people who, who, who regularly watch the show and they, they get on me sometimes because I don't always ask people their own personal testimony. And uh, so, so this, this little lady was talking to me. She says, we want to connect with those people who are talking to us about their ministry and how they came about to be a part of their ministry. And that's, that's a part of their personal story. So I'm not going to 
uh, not go without saying, what, what is, what's is your personal testimony that you would like to share with how you got involved and, and, and with the ministry and how your personal, own personal testimony? Okay. Um, I was raised in the church. Um, I, my mom says I accepted Christ at four, you know, with her. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that, that, you know, when I was in eighth grade, that's mm -hmm. when I really um, wanted to follow Christ and um, uh, asked him into my heart. And, you know, my, my journey was kind of like this through high school and college. And um, I married um, at 20, um, right before my senior year of college. And um, the man I married, um, I, I was very naive, was an alcoholic, mm. and didn't really understand a lot of that um, until we got married and experienced a lot of pain through that. And we had um, three children, and you know, I went to, we had, he had an affair, mm. and that was um, obviously devastating to me. And we came to the brink of considering divorce, but I, um, was advised by a pastor that we went to see to stay in the marriage, and so I did. And so he went, he, you know, he promised he would go to church with me. Um, I was going to a church, and so he went a couple of times, and, you know, that kind of fizzles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I would try everything. You know, I'd, like, send the kids in. They'd be all cute mm -hmm. and wake up, Dad, Daddy, you going to go to church with us today? Yeah, yeah. I tried guilt. I tried everything, mm -hmm. um, you know, that I could think of to manipulate him to make the right decision, right? That's right. kind of what we wives do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and so God brought me to um, 1 Peter 3, 1, and it says, Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. Mm. And so that was a powerful verse for Most me definitely. in several ways because it took a lot of pressure <laughs> off of me. Mm. You know, it wasn't my responsibility to try and drag him to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, I just needed to live the life that God put in me in front of him the best I could and let that speak. And um, little did I know, um, three months after our um, last son was born, he was killed in a car accident. Mm. And uh, honestly, I always um, worried about his salvation. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know, I didn't want to lie to my kids, you mm. know, as they were growing up, you know, saying, oh, daddy's in heaven, because I don't know. I don't right. know where daddy is. And really, Tony Kemp is one that really helped me okay. come yeah. to terms with that. Um, I was going to a Bible study that he had out on 12th Street, and um, it was funny because I had a lot of questions. So I was raised in a Presbyterian church. Um, we were very solid scripturally. Mm -hmm. um, but the spirit wasn't talked about a lot. Mm. And so um, Tony introduced me, you know, more to um, the Holy Spirit and yeah. um, just learning about that. And so he would meet me before the Bible study, at least a half hour, sometimes an hour beforehand, and I would just fire all these questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um, he was just great. He'd hang in there and answer all my questions. And he talked about, you know, the balance of the spirit mm -hmm. and the word, right. you know, some are strongly over here, some are over here, and we need to come to that balance. And so anyway, with talking to him about Sanford and the accident and all of that, and, and he said to me, Lynette, you don't know what happened in those last moments of life, mm. you know, where his heart was, what happened, and, um, and that's where I rest. You know, it really wasn't my responsibility. It was his choice, and so that kind of helped me get rid of some of that um, a burden that wasn't mine right. and the hope that, you know, he had those last moments to make that decision. Yeah. Um, so that really, as I went through that and then became a widow, realized that there was no support for a young widow. Mm. I mean, I went to a widow's group and it was widows that were just older and I know they have pain and they have things they deal with, but you know, I needed to know, I had three little kids. How do yeah. I get back into life? How do I, right. how do I deal with just de depression? How do I deal mm. with finances? How do I, you know, it was just a different world almost. And um, so that really brought me uh, strongly back and really seeking that deep relationship yeah. with Christ because that was the only way I was going to make it through. And out of that, my heart was really drawn toward hurting women. And so I've gone through a lot of, of different things. And, you know, this is where God has me right now. I became aware of the ministry. I went to um, a meeting they were having, just a community meeting, trying to get things organized to get this ministry to come to Quincy. 
And so I went, and I did not go with the intention of being the center director. Mm -hmm. I went because they talked about making peace with your past, and I thought that would be a great thing for me to do to get some, you know, continue that healing process. And as I was going through that, I was even asked to co-chair um, with someone and prayed about it and just really felt God didn't want me to, you know, wasn't the time. And then it was about three months down the road, I was driving back from my mom's and it was like, um, you know, God laid it on my heart, I want you to become a part of this. Yeah. And so I um, actually went to one of their big meetings in Bloomington because, you know, you hear a lot of things about a ministry, mm -hmm. but reality sometimes is not <laughs> right. carried out. Mm -hmm. And so I went and within an hour of being there, I saw it was a real deal. And yeah. I looked over at Jewel Holt, who is our regional area director, and I go, I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm in. So, yeah. um, so this is where God's brought me. But a couple verses that God has given me um, is 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5. And this is what happened um, probably a year or so after I was widowed. And uh, it says, um, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Mm. And that's just, um, you know, the importance of, I went through pain, I went through difficult circumstances and God gave me compassion, yeah. you know, and he provided people for me to lean on. And because of that, I need to take what he gave me and pour it out on others. Exactly. And so the Center for Women's Ministry is an opportunity for me to do that. Wow, what a powerful testimony. I mean, in, in that story, you talk about healing, hope, and restoration, you experienced that yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and that, I think, is, is a wonderful thing uh, that everybody can, can, can connect with and understand. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. I really do appreciate that. Just to sound like you guys are doing some, some outstanding things with Tri-State Area Christian Women's Ministry ministry. Um, and so if somebody wants to get involved, what is some? what would you say would be the first step they need to take if they want to get involved with the ministry? If they want to get involved with the ministry, again, they can call us at 217-440-8200 um, and get a hold of me. And um, I or Carol or both of us will meet with them and just talk about the ministry, um, show them around our center, talk to them about what we do, um, you know, our mission, our vision uh, mm -hmm. for Quincy. And then, um, you know, see if they're still interested. If they're interested, we will give them an application. They fill that out. It is the most lengthy application I have ever filled out in mm -hmm. my entire life. Okay. <laughs> but you guys are walking yeah. through it, I'm sure. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so you fill out the application. We'll go through an interview process. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we want you to have an active personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, after the interview process, we'll do receptionist training and then they can begin um, volunteering. Um, we recommend everyone and we require those that want to be in leadership uh, to uh, take the making peace with your past. Um, so they would, you know, take that when it comes around. And then if they wanted to move on to actually, you know, leading something, they would do the peer counseling. Awesome, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the, the people who are me watching today? Um, no, you just, you know, something that you can do for our ministry is pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, pray. Yeah. We, we have, God has blessed us so much. Finances has not been an issue. Mm -hmm. um, even through the COVID and all of this, God has provided for us, and it's just been a huge testimony. Um, I, you know, I just see God's hand on our ministry, and I'm thankful yeah. for that. So just to, to pray that we can honor that and we can walk in integrity, you know, through all the difficulties that the world is going through. Most definitely. Um, that we can uh, remain united, yeah. you know, as volunteers and um, just in mission and vision and to have that heart to help women. And, awesome. and you know, with that non judgmental environment, that yeah. would be. Um, so important. The biggest thing. Yeah. And then, you know, if women are interested in volunteering, you know, I encourage them to, to come and just seek us out and yeah. see what we're about. You know, maybe we're not the fit for them, mm -hmm. but maybe we are, yeah. you know, and yeah. just to, if God's tugging on your heart, then, you know, just take that opportunity. Yeah, that, that most definitely. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate you being here. And we don't want to leave uh, without giving people an opportunity to uh, 
to uh, experience the healing and hope and restoration that comes with making Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. You know, you may have been watching the show today and listen to uh, Lynette talk about her own personal story, and you may have connected with that and some of the things they have going on and say, you know what, I want to be involved in that. I want to somehow, I know somebody, one of my friends who would want to get involved with that. Uh, but you connected with the idea of there need to be healing. Uh, there is hope for people, and, and that hope will bring people to a place of restoration. And that's what it's like to have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, to, to come to him and, and he provides healing, he provides hope, he provides, a relationship with him provides restoration. So if you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now as we pray, uh, continue to pray and, and ask for your prayers uh, for the tri-state area uh, Christian women's ministry, uh, but also just for your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So can you uh, join me in prayer? Father God, we just want to thank you and praise you uh, for being the awesome God you are. We thank you for ministries like the tri-state uh, area. Area, uh, Christian women's ministry and, and the wonderful work that they are doing of, of allowing women to have an opportunity to make some peace with their past and, and the, the different things they have going on, the cup of grace and all the, the wonderful ministries, workshops and things that they're doing um, there. So we just pray that you continue to bless them and keep them in the work that they're doing. Uh, we're praying right now for someone who may be watching this show right now who's never asked you to be their Lord and Savior, who understands that, that they are in, in need of healing, that they may have gone through some things in their past and they may have, have had some situations that, that have happened to them and, and they really need to come to a place where you know what, I'm gonna put my trust in Jesus Christ and he's gonna be my Lord and my savior. So Lord, they stand right now uh, um, knocking at the door saying, Lord, I wanna be a part uh, of your family. So we just pray, Lord Jesus, that, that they would ask you to be, be their Lord and savior, uh, that they will accept you as their Lord and savior, what you did on the cross for them, uh, how you died and rose again on the third day, that they would uh, believe uh, in what you wanna do in their lives and what you, you have desire to, to bring them to a place of full restoration. And, and ultimately, Father God, we pray that, that they would just uh, just come to you uh, with open arms and that you would, would uh, forgive them of all their sins and, and, and make them brand new. So Lord Jesus, we just pray uh, that you have your way in their life and that they would just believe in the prayer that says that I accept, I believe, and I confess that you are my Lord and Savior from here on. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Well, we thank you so much, Lynette, for joining us and talking about the wonderful things you guys are have coming up. We're excited about July 7th and you guys getting back open and, and we're just going to be praying that that happens. I know this is a, a wonderful uh, ministry going on here in a, in a tri-state and, and uh, we're excited about having uh, people get an opportunity to come and be a part of the wonderful things you guys going on in your, your ministry. Any, any final words? Um, no, just, you know, our motto, we've been where you are, yeah. and just, uh, you know, out to women. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have any hurt or pain, um, we're here for you. We care about you and yeah. uh, just give our ministry a call. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us this week of Outreach Connection. We don't take for granted you give an opportunity for us to come into your homes and talk about the wonderful uh, opportunities that are in the, the tri-state area, uh, like tri-state, uh, the area Christian Women's Ministry. We are so excited to get a chance, the opportunity to talk about those ministries and some of the needs of those ministries, whether it be prayer, our volunteers. We, 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 we just uh, hope that that this show is giving me an opportunity to say, you know what, I need to get involved. Whether it's in my, my put them on my, my prayer uh, list or it's going in and volunteering and calling them and contacting them. So the information has been there for you. We pray that you will act on those things and we just thank you so much for joining us for Outreach Connection. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.